All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Bassin' with Beckham. Um, as you can tell by the title, this is going to be all about high school fishing. Um, I've wanted to make this video for quite a while since I have been in the high school fishing game um, as an angler and now as a boat captain for my alma mater, Bullard. Um, but there's a lot of misconceptions about high school fishing, and there's a lot of things that I think I can teach the, the high school anglers now that will help them be better and more successful throughout their high school career. So let's jump into it. So first off, I want to give you kind of a backstory about my high school fishing uh, career, I guess you could call it. Probably not a career, but um, anyway. So my high school Bullard, we started our club the end of my sophomore year. And really my junior and senior year is when high school fishing kind of took off. Um, junior year, we fished against ourselves. We were really the only school around that had a bass fishing team. Um, thanks to Tim Howe, who's our president, and he's actually the president over the whole THSBA. Uh, he started it up for us, and my junior and senior year, I was president of the team. So my senior year of high school, um, that's really when the fishing took off in high school. We had about 60 schools with actual teams, um, and we, me and my partner Kevin, we actually qualified for the Texas top six which was kind of like our state championship we took the top six teams from our division um, and there were two other divisions I'm not exactly sure where they were located at um, took the top six teams put them all together and we had kind of a, a shootout on Lake Fork we actually ended up winning the tournament which was super cool we finished me and my partner finished fifth in it uh, but our region did actually win the state championship um, and then after that me and my partner Kevin Throughout the year, we've been placing pretty well in the tournaments, and we uh, we finished third overall, Angler of the Year 2014, so that was pretty cool, um, getting to go to a big banquet and stuff like that. But high school fishing is such a cool deal now because there's so much money to be made. Like, literally, you can win thousands and thousands of scholarship money for your, your college career. And really, people don't understand it, and they don't really know. I don't think these high school anglers really know how to attack these lakes. Um, and be successful. So I'm going to make this video series. This is going to be part one. Um, I'm going to dive into a little bit about the bait aspect of it and what you should throw if you want to be successful in high school. Um, and let's dive into that right now. All right, so before we dive into the baits, let me go over this real quick. So how this high school deal goes is you get four qualifying tournaments, I believe. I think we have four. After those four, they cut the field to like 80-something schools. Well, there's only about 250 schools overall. So you just got to beat about 130 teams. In that regard, I'm going to weigh in as many bass as I can, period. I'm not going to go out there looking for the win, looking to bust a 30-pound sack. No. You bring five fish to the scales in these tournaments, just five. I don't care how big they are. You bring five fish to the scales, top 35, every single tournament. Every single one. Because you just need five fish. That's all you need. So I'm going to go over these baits real quick, and hopefully I'm going to give you a little insight on what I would throw uh, to be successful nowadays. Let's go. Swim jig. Absolutely not. The lakes we fish most of the time are too dirty to be successful with a swim jig. Small crankbait. You know how many things can go wrong when you hook a bass on treble hooks? It's terrible. A crankbait that dives to 70 feet. Now, unless you are on the mega school of bass and they're in like 20 foot of water, this is kind of acceptable, but heck no. Rattle trap, same thing. Treble hooks, no bueno. All right, so if you wanna be successful in high school fishing, I'm not talking about these major tournaments where you're out there actually trying to win. I'm talking about the qualifying tournaments um, and you wanna finish high. These are the two baits that both of you, one should be throwing one, one should be throwing the other. And I, I guarantee you, I know you can't guarantee a lot of things. I guarantee you, if you throw these two baits all day, you will have five fish bite your line, period. End of story. I'm not even going to argue about it because, let's just get into it. First one, a spinner bait. This has like been around since forever. All the... Bassmasters Classics from like 1970 something. We're one on these little spinner baits. I swear, if one of these tournaments, I see a boat, it's got a spinner bait tied on without a trailer hook, I am going to lose it. Okay, 40% of your bites come on this trailer hook right here. That's, that's like a dollar. 
pay the dollar. Get a trailer hook. The next bait, I would throw this all day long. If I was in a high school tournament, I would throw this all day long because anything would bite this. That's a Texas rig Senko. That's like a the smallest way you can get away with is perfect. That's a three sixteenths on a three aught EWG worm hook. And let me just let me just rant for a second here. A Senko is a Senko. When you Texas rig a Senko, it does not matter what Senko you throw. I throw the big bite baits, trick stick, five inch. Those are two dollars and like fifty cents a pack. There's another brand out there that charges you seven dollars and eighty nine cents per pack. I cannot fathom spending eight dollars on a pack of Cinco's. I just can't do it. I've caught more fish on this little bitty trick stick, two dollars and fifty cents. You get like a pack of ten of them. Um, than I have on those. So obviously, I understand if you're wacky rigging, yeah, it's got more flutter action, blah, blah, blah. Texas rig, this dude's just gonna lay on the bottom. And any bass that is even remotely hungry is gonna see this and go, hmm, I'm gonna eat it. And then you're gonna catch them. The key with high school fishing is being very efficient. Because you're not, most of the time, it's gonna be a struggle out there. I mean, be real, it was, it's a struggle. But the bites you do have, you got to put them in the boat. That's why I recommend these two baits because first off, they have a single hook. So your fish landing will go way up with a single hook. Um, treble hooks, nightmare. Fish jumps, spits the hook. This single hook, if you get it past their lip and you, you jam it in there on the hook set, I mean, it's not going to come off. Obviously, some might. But most of them will stay hooked up and you'll get them in the boat. Um, but I would throw this thing all day long because all you need is five fish. And this thing can do it, I promise. Um, the colors I would go with are a darker color, because around here we have some stained water. I would go with some stained. Uh, this is like a kiwi. I'd also go with this. Whoop. Can't look at that very uh, very long, because that's top secret right there. Um, but yeah, and those two baits right there will allow you to be so successful, because you'll be able to weigh in fish. And in these tournaments, it's all about weighing in fish. If you can bring in 10 pounds to the scales, you're gonna finish so high. But I'm doing this for the anglers that really want to learn and want to be successful in high school fishing. Um, obviously, I know there's some of y'all that actually know what's going on. You, you pre-fish, you know exactly what baits you're using. In that regard, I'm not telling you not to throw a crankbait, um, not to throw a swim jig or anything like that. I'm just telling you the two baits that I would throw to be super duper efficient and successful. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I will be coming out with a part two on how to get known, I guess, and how to get your name out there as a uh, high school fisherman. Um, and I'll be dishing that video out here in a couple days. So y'all stay tuned and have a great day.